Good morning. Welcome to another week of Cornerstone Church here online. We're so glad to be gathering together, coming this morning to worship, hear the word of God, and just continue seeing what he is doing in and through our lives. We're so excited to be able to do this, and as we're nearing the time where we're going to be able to gather together again, we want to just continue to press into what God has for us in these moments. You may be feeling like in all of these weeks, in these last few months, that you have no idea where you're at spiritually. You've been feeling up and down the entire roller coaster of emotions with everything that's been going on in our world around us. And maybe today you're just kind of jumping into this stream and you're like, I don't even know where I fit into this moment. But there's an encouragement that Paul gives to the church in Philippi in Philippians chapter 1. And he says, just simply in in verse 6, And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I find that so comforting to my own heart. And maybe today is just one of those days where we're going to draw closer to Jesus. Just realize that he is giving us an invitation this morning to draw near to him. And as we continue on this journey, we've got to realize that, that this is a journey with Jesus. This isn't a one day thing and everything's better. So we're in the middle of this journey together, and today there is an invitation from God himself to draw near to him, to just come closer, to allow him to just do whatever it is that he needs to do and give whatever it is that we need him to give us today. So Jesus, we come to you in your presence this morning, wherever it is that we are. We ask that you would fill our hearts. We trust you, Lord God. That as we see the day approaching, Lord Jesus, we know that you are working all things out. We pray that today we would just draw near to you. Thank you for your invitation. So now we come with open arms, ready to receive all that you have. We come to worship you in your precious and holy name. Amen. Join us in this amazing morning of worship together.
we're so glad today to have with us a good friend from college, which is a long time ago, uh, Brother Rick Rockhind and his wife, Jennifer. Um, they've been longtime friends of, uh, personally, but also Cornerstone Church. Um, Brother Rick's been coming, I don't know how many years now, but it's been a lot of years that he's been um, a regular at our church, about every two years, I think it is, right, Brother Rick? Yep. Um, and so we were scheduled to have him come with his family this time. So we were excited. They don't always get to travel with him. But um, Jennifer and their three great kids were going to come back and we would do a little New York City tour. And then, of course, we got hit with this virus and pandemic. And uh, just a couple weeks before that um, visit, we were shut down. So um, we're, we're glad to have them with us today. We just want to say hi, Brother Rick, Sister Jennifer. How are you? Hello, hello. Where, no, you go. Let me start. We were really looking forward to being with all of you there. I know it really has been some time, so we were pumped to come. Uh, we don't always make it, but, you know, Richard and I will kind of talk about, you know, these are the churches that I have on my calendar for this year. And we're like, oh, yes, definitely we want to be their cornerstone. So we had you guys on the calendar um, so we really were sad that we couldn't make it, but I'm just so thankful to have this opportunity to at least be with you um, via Zoom, which seems like it's a new way of communication now. So we're thankful at least for that and that um, we can just share in uh, loving on Jesus together with you all, even if it's through this means. So. You know, like my wife said, they don't always come with me. When I bring my wife and kids, there's a lot of fasting and prayer involved uh, for road trips like that. But my wife has always loved the city. And so we are looking forward to coming back to Carl Stack Cornerstone Assembly. I know you guys have done a tremendous facelift on the place. Yeah. I was actually really looking forward to seeing the new setup. But let me say this. Uh, I want you all to know that I love Pastor John Brock. And the reason I love him is because he's an amazing man. He's a man of humility, a man of integrity, a man who puts up with me and is willing to be my friend and even be in public with me. Um, so having said that, um, I thank God for him. Uh, some of you have heard about Pastor Bruce Gorski. He's a good friend that went to Bible school with me and Pastor John. You know, Pastor John has a lot of great qualities, but one of the things I also love about him is that he's a man of his word and he's a man who practices what he preaches, and on two occasions, your pastor has come all the way to Pittsburgh to see his friend and my friend from Bible school, and Renee has told me that's Pastor Bruce's wife. A lot of people have wanted to come and said they would come, but have never showed up. So I thank God for Pastor John, your leader, who believes in people, believes in the love of Jesus, and was willing to make that trip out a number of times. So I'm thankful. Let me also throw the fact that, that I'm going to be coming back it's a reality uh, because I told Pastor John, I'm not going to do this Zoom thing and, and the video stuff. This isn't going to count for me coming. So uh, get ready. We're coming back next year uh, to Carlstadt, to Cornerstone. We're going to enjoy a great weekend with the Pros and go to a New Jersey diner. So we're I'm coming. coming. <laughs> Amen. We're looking forward to that. Um, me and, and Brother Rick go back about 37, eight years. Um, back in our college days, we played soccer together. We interacted in dorms and classes and got to know each other pretty well. And um, Brother Rick has been involved in different pastoral um, leadership uh, ministries. He's involved in his local church now besides uh, evangelists on the road uh, most of the time. Um, but he's he's connected at his at his local church and has been helping to carry them through this season also, and um, he's been involved in Teen Challenge Ministries and a director in Syracuse, wasn't it? Upstate yeah. New York, eight years. Yeah. yeah, and so he's he's been around in ministry in all sorts of uh, forms, and so uh, we always look forward to it. the word he has this time. Unfortunately, I don't know that you're singing for us. We, we're going to miss that. Um, but uh, You're not gonna miss it <laughs> when you come, we're looking forward to it. But I asked Brother Rick if he would speak to us today regarding um, praying in the Spirit. We're in a series, Life in the Spirit, and we're looking at different aspects of how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and equips us uh, for life uh, in following Christ and also 
um, in, in reaching the world. And so uh, welcome, Brother Rick. We look so forward to hearing the word of God from uh, your heart today. Thanks for being with us, Jennifer, also. God bless you and your family. And uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay. Love God to bless. All of you. Yeah. Love you guys. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Hello, Cornerstone Church. Uh, we love you guys. We're certainly looking forward to being with you next year. But here we are today with this uh, Zoom call or live stream, uh, if you will. And, uh, but I'm very blessed to be a part of the series on life in the spirit. Um, I love Pastor John and Pastor John Christian and the whole family and we believe in you. We're praying for you and I know you're praying for us. And so thank you for having us today. Thank you for having me. Um, and looking forward to seeing you in person. So we're talking about praying in the spirit. Uh, that's the first session of this series. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. So I just want to share a few thoughts and then we're going to get into the four points of the message. But when you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, it talks all about the armor of God. And I noticed by reading this that prayer is at the end of the talk and discussion on all the pieces of armor. And so you think, and I wonder, why isn't prayer part of the pieces of armor? And I realized prayer is everything. So not only do we need to have the armor on, but everything that we do every day of our lives needs to be based in prayer. And that's why it says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions uh, with all kinds of prayers and requests with this mind uh, in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. So it's all about prayer. Can you say amen? So. I want you to understand this morning that the greatest weapon that you and I have is our inti intimacy with Jesus. Uh, a, a number of weeks ago, we saw the God's Not Dead movie on one of our pizza nights, and my kids and wife looked over at me and I was crying. It's a great movie, but they were surprised that I was crying because they said, Dad, you've already seen the movie. And that's true. In fact, I was probably crying more this time around, but I was crying because the movie shows the power of prayer, the movie shows the love of God and the commitment and the conviction that is a part of God pursuing us. And I want you to understand this morning that there's a battle going on right now for the souls of people. And God is not dead. God is very alive and He still saves, He still heals, He still forgives, and He has a plan for all of us. You know, people think, and they've often said, if I dig way down deep, if mankind digs way down deep, they'll probably find some good there. And I want you to know this morning that's not true. There's nothing good in us. Our best days are filthy rags in the sight of God. That's why we need His presence. That's why we need His Spirit. That's why we need His power. So before we get into the four points, 
And I don't think you'll really appreciate or understand the four points if you don't first get what I'm about to share. I want to give you two thoughts. Number one, born of the Spirit. That's salvation. To be born of the Spirit is the day you become a Christian. Because the Holy Spirit on that day came into your life and took over. Your heart, your mind, your goals all change. Your desires change. You find out that conviction is real. You find out that life is about wanting to be right with God and do the right thing and serve Him. You also find that people will say, man, what happened to you? Well, the Bible covers that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says, and you know this one, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that a change has taken place. So that's what it means to be born of the Spirit. You're born again. You're not the same person. You don't change physically, but you change spiritually. You still look the same. You still got the same bills and the same battles, but things have changed on the inside, and your spirit is born again. Your mind, will, and emotions are now under the direction of the Lord. You're never going to be the same, and that's a beautiful thing. Can you say amen? John 3.3, 3, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. So that's what it means to be born of the Spirit, salvation. But the second thought I want you to understand, and this is going to make you appreciate the series and today's message on praying in the Spirit, is the idea of being filled with the Spirit. Or as some refer to it, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I picture when you think about baptism, I picture water baptism. And the fact that our church... I recently went out and bought a water baptism tank. We bought it from uh, Tractor Supply. It's literally a metal eight-foot eating drinking trough for animals. And when you look at it, it looks like a coffin. And I thought, wow, that's perfect when you're talking about water baptism because when you are water baptized, it's a representation of you dying to yourself. It's an outward expression of an inward change. And that's a great thing to be water baptized. And it's a biblical. Jesus said, repent and be baptized for your sins. But also understand that when we talk about being filled with the Spirit or baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's the idea of being immersed in His power, immersed in His presence, immersed in the anointing of God in a tremendous way. So in the book of Acts, they were already saved. They already knew the Lord. They were already born again. But they were waiting for the promise of something more. The Assemblies of God believes that the initial evidence of being filled with the Spirit or the baptism in the Holy Spirit is tongues. Now, there are debates on that because people say, why can't you be uh, filled with the Spirit or baptized in the Spirit and have joy or peace or strength? That's a good argument, and there, those things should also be a part of it. But the initial, the first thing that happened to those believers when the Holy Spirit fell is they began to speak in other tongues as the Lord gave the utterance. And so it's a prayer language that God gives you. It's a tool that can be used, and it can be abused. I've heard the saying, you know, you can speak in tongues and still live like the devil. And unfortunately, that's true. But I mean, oh, God has the final answer with all of us, and we just have to take care of how we're living. So to be born of the Spirit is salvation. So when you get saved, the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. Being filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit is something in addition where God comes on you, immerses you in His Spirit, it's a prayer language, a tool that God gives you, and it's just a, an added addition to what you're experiencing in the things of God, and it's for everybody. So be encouraged with that. So here we go with the four points on praying in the Spirit. What does it say in Ephesians that we looked at earlier? Number one, it says, on all occasions, pray in the Spirit. And I want you to be reminded this morning that we're living in some tough days. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it says, But mark this, and when we read something like that, we should probably mark it down. It says, There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form 
of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. The message version says it like this, and it's pretty cool. I didn't make this up. It says, do not be naive. There are difficult times ahead, and we can all agree with that. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed. Uh, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, -dog, uh, unbending, slanderous, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags. It actually says that. Addicted to lust and allergic to God. They'll make a show of religion, but behind the scenes they are animals. Stay clear of these people. Now we could stop right now and say, man, that's enough video because... What I just read is certainly where we're at today. There are riots going on in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a recession, in an election year. I'm not sure how much more we can take. But guess what? Jesus said that in the last days, he would pour out his spirit among all flesh. That's why we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 reminds us that the Lord is going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Joel chapter 2 and verse 8, 28 also reminds us of that. You know, you know you're in a lockdown when your kids have an, a virtual orthodontist appointment and you get excited about it. And then we went to the dentist a week later and we were excited about it being a field trip. You know, in this lockdown, it has caused us to get to know each other better. I think of the COVID-19, you know, we, we were told to wash our hands and sing the happy birthday song. And, uh, but I believe that we need, to, uh, we need to wash our hearts. We need to wash our minds. We need to wash our attitudes and maybe sing the Jesus Loves Me song. So we're talking about praying in the Spirit on all occasions. As I prepared this message, it was actually 2.30 in the morning. I was tired. I was hungry and cranky. Notice what it says to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. That prayer language, that tool, that exercise that we can do. Understanding that, that prayer language, the being filled with the Spirit, uh, is something that we control. We can use it. It's something to our benefit to speak in that unknown language and to speak to the Lord to the best of our ability. So, uh, you know, in all occasions, when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're discouraged, when you're well, when you're sick, when you're rich or broke, which I would never be rich, uh, when, you're, when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when it's sunny out or raining. In all occasions, we do this. Um, these are all reasons why we need the Holy Spirit and why we need to walk in, and pray in the Spirit and obey Him. I recently had to rent a snake to deal with a clog in our basement. And boy, what a messy job it is to deal with uh, uh, you know, getting, getting, getting a clog undone. But, and, the, and the snake that we rented, it's a machine, comes with different bits that help to grab the roots and the things that are clogging. And I think it's great to know that praying in the Spirit gives us the power to deal with things and get to the root of stuff. Secondly, not only are we to pray in all, at, in all occasions, but secondly, it says to pray with all kinds of prayer and petitions. Our church even right now is going through a week of prayer and fasting. We're believing God for change. We're believing God for a breakthrough and we're praying for revival. The Bible says in Psalms 46 and verse 10, be still and know that I am God. As I study this, the word still means to stop striving, stop fighting, but keep praying. To know means to be in all of God, to recognize his credentials, to appreciate who he is, to recognize and appreciate his power, his presence, his promises, his peace, and his purposes for your life. Psalms 51 and verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And when I realize that, we need our spirits renewed and a right spirit. That leads me to believe we can have a wrong spirit. And so that's what prayer does. And that's what praying and, and petitions and requests to him does. Galatians 5 and verse 16 says, So I say, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. The New Living Translation says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Romans 8, 26 in the NIV says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. I don't know about you, but I'm weak just about every day. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us 
through wordless groans. Romans 8.26 in the New Living Translation says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We, example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit, here it is, prays with us and for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Acts 1.8 reminds us, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Psalms 30, 139 verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know me. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and lead me in the way. So when we pray, let's pray, God, search me, know me, test me, see me, and lead me. We recently put some solar lights out on our deck, and I bought four of them. Three of them worked. One of them wasn't working, and I realized it wasn't working because it wasn't getting enough sun. We have to understand that the Son of God working in us and speaking to us allows us to experience His presence and to be a witness. We need to let the Lord live in us, work through us, and have control over us in order to experience His power. And that's what praying in the Spirit does. It allows that to have, happen. Thirdly, not only do we have to pray on all occasions, secondly, pray with all kinds of prayer petitions, but thirdly, we have to be alert. The Bible said that, says that the Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The Bible also says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Royal Rangers, I'm still the Ranger commander. I've been doing this since 2008 because nobody else will ever take the job. I'll die being the senior Ranger commander, so pray for me. But Rangers has a Ranger code. The first part of the Ranger code says to be alert mentally, physically, and spiritually. When you walk in the Spirit, you're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. And praying in the Spirit daily helps us to be mentally, physically, and spiritually ready. The Bible teaches that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and powers in high places. Uh, I committed a while ago the unpardonable sin. Now that's a joke, but bear with me here. I blew a head gasket on our Subaru. I've always heard about people blowing head gaskets, but I did. They call it blowing a head gasket because that is exactly what happens when you drive your car and there's no fluid circulating in the car. What happened was a hose busted and the, rat, and the radiator, radiator fluid went everywhere in the engine. I closed the hood and kept driving, praying in the Spirit, hoping that I would make it home. What I should have done is stopped, not driven the car, called AAA, which I have, and had them come out and tow it. But I pushed the envelope and I drove without the circulation of the antifreeze happening. And because of that, I blew a head gasket. May I remind you that praying in the Spirit allows us to have the power of God working and circulating in us and through us so that we stay cool, relaxed, and we don't lose it. Matthew 26 and verse 41 says, Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The idea of watching and praying means to submit your thoughts, your words, your gestures, and lives to the Holy Spirit. Temptation is real. Battles are real. What we go through every day is real. That's why praying in the Spirit is so important. Because it allows us to press in, to press on and stay focused on the presence of God and the power of God working in and through us. Praying in the Spirit, as I mentioned earlier, is a tool that, a God, that the Lord gives us to help us with the job that needs to be done. My father-in-law has taught me over the years to really collect tools and realize the importance of the right tool for the right job. Because if you have the wrong tool for the right job, it's going to take forever. It's probably not going to go right and somebody's going to get hurt or something's going to go down or somebody, something's going to get broke. So the right tool for the right job is very important. God has allowed us to experience being filled with the Spirit or baptized in the Spirit and able to have that prayer in the Spirit experience so that we can get the job done and that we can make a difference. Sometimes you'll see the check engine light on your car. You don't ignore the check engine light. You pay attention to it. Our hearts need to be right with God. The Holy Spirit speaks through us 
to make some changes. You know, one of my favorite stories is in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35 where it says, let us go to the other side. And Jesus took the disciples to the other side of the lake through and in a fishing boat. And I think, man, he could have had a jet. He could have had a high-speed bass boat. He could have just walked on the water or just met him over there. But Jesus got in the boat with the disciples and he went to the other side. Being filled with the Spirit, praying in the Spirit allows us and reminds us that Jesus is in the boat helping us to get to the other side. We all face battles, discouragement, loneliness, marital issues, addictions. Your kids are running from God. There are all kinds of things that we face, but we have to trust the God. God. We have to trust the Lord in the midst of all of it. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 says, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, during this pandemic, everybody was working out. I tried to go to Walmart and buy some eight-pound dumbbells for my wife. They were sold out of all the equipment, exercise equipment, and I've noticed that people are walking and running because people are working out. Well, the Bible says we need to work out our salvation. I'm all for working out physically, but what does it mean to work out your salvation? Well, it means to pray, to read the Bible, uh, to go to church, to be accountable, to be in fellowship with others. But it also means to have faith. Faith without works is dead. And it's a balance. God is sovereign. God's in control. And God knows what he's doing. But we also need to be faithful and do our part. I said years ago in a, in a church service, in my message, I said, Christians don't grow by accident. They grow on purpose. We need to be concerned about the spirit more than the body. The body's important, but the spirit and feeding the spirit and praying in the spirit is very, very important. Did you work out today? Question mark. Not physically, but spiritually. And then lastly, it says in Ephesians to keep praying for God's people. We have a responsibility as believers to be praying for the saints, to hold one another up in prayer. It's easy to say I'll pray, but we actually need to do it. There's a remnant all through Scripture. You and I as believers are part of that remnant. 2 Chronicles 7.14 reminds us, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Certainly, we need healing and we need forgiveness. Praying in the Spirit for others is very important and reminds us how much we need Him and how much we need others. And without Him, we are nothing Without him, we can do nothing. Even being on this quarantine for two into three months made us realize how much we appreciate and need one another. So pray for one another in the spirit. The president declared a few weeks ago uh, that churches are now essential. Open the doors, pastor, of the churches because we need prayer. He said this more now than ever. Joshua 1, 9 says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This past week I went and had an MRI done on my shoulder. Man, oh man, I can't believe it's 2020 and they haven't come up, come up with a better way to do an MRI. You're super tight, enclosed, you've got this little squeeze ball to call for help if you need it, and then there's a jackhammer going, it sounds like there's people yelling and screaming, somebody's banging on the door, I mean, I was actually afraid. I was okay, but I'm thinking, man, I just took a nap. That's what I do when I'm locked in anywhere. And they said, would you like any music? I said, yes, Christian. And they put on some Christian music. I could barely hear this Christian music because of all the racket going on. Many times in the Christian life, we are praying. We're praying in the Spirit. We're trying to do the right thing. But there's all kinds of havoc and noise and people yelling and the dog barking and the phone's ringing and there's all this stuff temptation and distractions. Even today, getting this video done, you have no idea how hard it was. I wanted to be standing. We had to cut the video into two parts. I hope John Christian can bring it together because the dog was barking. My kid was told not to ring the doorbell, but he did. So it's been a day. But my point is, um, we need to allow the Spirit of God to minister to us no matter what we're facing. He's good. He's faithful. And He will see us through everything. I started to cry almost in the MRI because I said, Lord, I know you're with me. I hear the praise music and Jesus be glorified. I was praying. My shoulder hurts, but God knows, doesn't he? We don't need to live in fear. People are messed up. People were messed up before the quarantine. People are more messed up even now, but people have struggled with anxiety and depression, discouragement, loneliness. 
People have lost their job and their business, their way of life and their routine. People have lost security. My wife told me the other day, some lady took her own life. She was a writer for some TV show, I believe. She ended her life. People need God. People need prayer. People need to be interceded for. As I close out, Pastor Bruce Gorski went to Bible school with me and Pastor John Pra. Unfortunately, a year or so ago, he had a stroke. Um, he, uh, he was on the soccer team with us. He introduced me to my wife, Jennifer. He's a fighter. He loves Jesus. The medical people didn't even give him a chance. But I got news for you. Pastor Bruce is still with us. He has a beautiful home with his wife and kids. And to God be the glory. And so we have been visiting him. And there's a clip that you're going to see in the next minute after I'm done that shows Pastor Bruce. Even though we can't talk that well and his life will never be the same, he still is able to sing. He's still able to pray in the Spirit and speak to God with that tool that God has given him. That's his proof that we need to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with prayer petition. We need to be alert and we need to realize that the Lord's coming back and we need to realize that we have to press forward and we need to pray for one another. Would you pray with me, Father? Thank you for this day. I pray for the people at Cornerstone Church that you would fill them with your spirit, you would baptize them in your spirit, you would use them for your glory to speak in that prayer language, that gift them that tool to press on, to press in, to press up, to press through. I know that there are needs represented in the church today. Families, marriages, kids, addictions, loneliness, depression, anxiety, and things that we can't even think about right now that face, people are facing. May your will be done in all of us today. Thank you for this series on life in the Spirit. Help us, God, to pray in the Spirit. We give you praise today. May your anointing rest on those of Cornerstone. I'm excited to be back live, joining with them to see all the newly uh, renovate, renovated things you've done and what they've done there, giving a whole new facelift to Cornerstone AG in Carlstadt, New Jersey. But maybe wait, may we be reminded that you are giving us a facelift in our countenance, in our spirit, that garbage in, garbage out. What goes in comes out, but you are renewing us. You are saving us. You are convicting us. You are washing us clean every day through your presence, through your power, through your spirit, through your word, through your promises. We love you. We bless you, God. We give you praise today in Jesus' name. That's on my heart to hear and raise my tears relieve how precious is that grace of fear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come to grace that brought me safe the Lord and grace will lead me home. When we been there ten thousand years, right shot. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and for being a part of our service. We pray that you were blessed in this time as you heard the word of God, that your heart was stirred in affection and love for Jesus. And maybe this is new to you. Maybe some of this is a little foreign in, in understanding. And you're, you're maybe even new here to Cornerstone Church. You've been joining us over these last few weeks or during this quarantine season. We would love to connect with you, just show you some next steps in this life with Jesus. 
how to get connected here at Cornerstone and be a part of the bigger community of what's going on here. So you can go to our website, cornerstoneagnj.com and go to our connect page there. You could go to our Facebook page and see the different things that we're doing on throughout the week as well. We're so excited for these next few weeks coming up as we're gonna to continue to have some other guest speakers join us and share their perspectives and their, their thoughts on life in the spirit and what that looks like for us as followers of Jesus. So join us over the next few weeks as we get some different faces on to share with us in this time. We're so looking forward in the moments and the days to come where we're able to gather together once again and we're slowly moving into that. So be on the lookout for what's gonna be taking place in the weeks to come as we begin to open our doors again in a limited capacity and we just begin to worship together in one accord as one body in this place again. All right, so we'll talk to you soon. We love you. Grace and peace.